Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your forgiveness, Father. We thank you that you so loved us that you gave. You gave your son, Jesus, that we might have life and abundance. Jesus, we thank you that you came as a man and resisted the devil to show us that we could. We thank you that you bore our sins in your body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by. Your wounds, we were healed, and we were healed, and we are healed. And we thank you for your healing and flowing through our bodies from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, through every cell and fiber of our being. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The entrance of your word has given us light and understanding. We thank you, Father, for your word is quick, powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirits and joints and a manner. <clears throat> and it's a discern of our thoughts and intents. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into all the truth. He's our helper, our comfort, our revealer, our reminder, and he prays for us when we do not know how to pray for ourselves. Holy Spirit, we pray to minister us as only you can today. <clears throat> Help us to root out, cool down, throw down, destroy all the things that are not like our Father. But we can build and plant the things that are like Him. Thank you, Father, for this United States of America. We thank you, Father, for godly leaders. We thank you, Father, for the godly leaders in this United States of America. We thank you, Father, for this, our service today. <coughs> and we pray you bless us on this service, Father. And as we break up the foul ground, as your word goes forth, we give and pass the utterance. And we're being 
change from the inside out. We're hearers and doers of your word, Father. And we thank you, Father, as we go out. We're a blessing. Let not light shine. So that men may see your good works and glorify you in heaven. And we thank you, Father, for your cousin I love to grow. We thank you, Phil, for the knowledge of your will. And you've given us the spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge of you. And Father, we thank you for all your abundant provisions to us as your children. In the name of Jesus, amen. <coughs> Hebrews 11. First six verses of Hebrews 11. Read. Read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and through it he and did still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. You have seen the utter failure of sense knowledge to grasp the significance of revelation knowledge. Now let me show you what revelation knowledge can mean to a man. God has done all that he could do in our redemption. He gave, a, he gave his only begotten son as a substitute for our sins. His finished work meets every need of man. He perfectly satisfied the claim of the Supreme Court of the universe against outlaw of man. When he planned our redemption, it covered every need. He knew what was required. He furnished a redemption that utterly met the need of every man. He has provided a perfect redemption for spirit, soul, and body. Since the Son had done that work for him, he now stands ready to make good every promise in order to meet our faith for every need. He has provided a perfect righteousness for us so that we may stand in his presence as though Adam had never sinned. He not only justified his own right to create it, he not only justified his own right to create man in the face of the fact that he knew man would fall, but he has gone beyond that to make it possible for every disease to be healed. Every weakness turned to strength, all power of Satan nullified, and to stand in his presence, a righteous, perfect being, an absolute new creation created in Christ Jesus. He became incarnate, took upon himself our limitations as a man, lived among us, and then permitted himself, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us. He became sick with our sickness. He became weak with our weaknesses. He was an outcast and became a part of all we were, becoming identified with all our weaknesses, sicknesses, and diseases. Then he bore our sins and diseases away and suffered until every man of every need of man was fully met. Then God justified him because he had met the demands of the human race in his sufferings. After being justified, he was made alive in spirit. Then he met the adversary, conquered him, stripped him of his authority and dominion, and arose from the dead. Then he carried his blood into the heavenly holy of holies, poured it out over the Father on the mercy seat, and made an eternal redemption for us. All that Jesus did, he did for us. His work is absolutely perfect. On the ground of that work, any man can stand right with God. Any man can be healed of all his diseases. Satan's dominion over the new creation is utterly broken. 
to Jesus was given the authority that the first Adam forfeited. And with the restoration of authority that was given him added dominion and power because of what he had done for the salvation of the human race. That authority and dominion has been given to us in the legal use of his name. We know it was the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. We know that the Spirit has done all that was expected of him to do, and that he stands ready not to make good in every not and he stands ready now to make good in every one of our lives all that God wrought for us in Christ. To pour the very life and nature of the Father God into our mortal bodies and actually swallow them up in life. For it's God who worketh in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Philippians 2:13. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. The Spirit himself will guide us into all truth. Jesus has done his part. The Holy Spirit has done his part. All three are ready now to meet every demand of yours. They stand ready to meet your faith, whatever that faith may take. But they stand helpless, and the work they have done for us is utterly of no avail unless we take what belongs to us. I have told you that believing is a verb, an action word. So all you need to do is to take what he has offered you. First, it is accepting your salvation, eternal life, new birth, and union with God. Next, it is taking the great, mighty Holy Spirit as your indweller, your guide and teacher, your healer and your overcomer. Then, it is taking your perfect deliverance from the enemy for your spirit, soul, and body. It is taking the perfect healing for your spirit, healing of the old wounds and diseases of unbelief, doubts, and fears. Now, as he stands complete before the Father, you stand complete in him before the Father. There is therefore now no condemnation for you because you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. To come into your presence, to sing the song to you. It's a song of praise and honor for all the things you've helped us through. You gave a life worth living. It's the life in love with you. And now I just love giving all my praises back to you. You're the father of creation. You're the risen lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. And I can walk with you every night and every day. We come into your presence to sing a song to you. It's a song of praise and honor for all the things you've helped us through. You gave a life worth living. It's a life in love with you. And now I just love giving all my praises back to you. You're the father of creation. You're the risen lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. And I can walk with you every night and every day. You're the father of creation. You're the risen lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free 
with love and liberty. And I can walk with you every night and every day.
to this place you call me, I will come. To your sanctuary, I will run. I leave it all behind. The selfishness, the pride. I lay it all aside. For this is my heart's cry. Oh, how I long to come into your holy place to behold the Lamb and bow before your home. Oh, how I long, oh, how I long to see you face to face. To this place you call me, I will come. To your sanctuary I will run. I'll leave it all behind. The selfishness, the pride. I'll lay it all aside. For this is my heart's cry. Oh, how I long to come into your holy place to behold the Lamb and bow before your throne of praise. Oh, how I long, oh, how I long, oh, how I long, oh, how I long, oh, how I long to see you face to face. Beautiful beyond description to marvelous flowers to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard. Beautiful beyond 
description to marvelous forwards to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard who can grasp your infinite wisdom who can fathom the depths of your love you are beautiful beyond description majesty enthroned above I stand I stand in all of you I stand I stand in all of you I stand I stand, I stand in love you, Holy Father, to whom all praise is due. I stand in love of you, Holy Father, to whom. All praise is due. I stand in awe of you, Holy Father, to whom all praise is due. I stand in Lord, 
Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we love you. Father, we thank you for Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher, our guide, and our ability. We yield to the Holy Spirit, we bind in spirit, not yield to the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're talking about God is a covenant keeping God. And uh, the whole thing deal with covenant, deal with uh, agreement, you might say. Um, what makes a uh, life turn is you making an agreement, somebody give you a promise and you you fulfill that promise and there's some type of reward comes with it. And so God is the great covenant maker. He always does his part. Okay, numbers 23 and verse 19. 23, 19. Okay, let's read that verse together. <laughs> hmm. 
319. Okay, let's read that together. Okay, ready? Read. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? So now you deal with God, you're not dealing with another man. Uh, man don't all, man will lie, but man don't always intend on lying. He don't fulfill what he says. Because the circumstances could cause man from not doing what he prompts. Um, he don't see the whole picture. He sees just a part of the picture. So when he make problems sometimes, he don't know he's not going to carry that out. You know, when the pandemic really brought that into play, where people made promise to travel, go certain places, and then they shut down some uh, most of the travel. So they didn't mean online, they, they meant on doing what they said they were going to do, but they didn't see the pandemic coming. Where God sees everything coming, so he knows uh, what the mark going to bring. So he, he knows that he can fulfill his part. So um, that's good to know. You want to be in covenant with God first. You know, y'all will make sure that you fulfill your covenant promises of God first. And um, and filling those covenant promises of God, you can fill them to most everybody else also when you do that. But you'll make sure that God is first. If God is not first, God is not at all. <laughs> God will uh, set back and take second place in your life. So you need to know that uh, if he's not first in your life, then he's not in your life. Uh, maybe doing some things that's good, but God would not take second place. You know, he's not running a bargain shop. He's not going to take whatever you give. Whatever you give me, okay. God said, no, God, God, I'm take, look, look, God not going to work on those deals. Uh, he can't be first. Then, you know, <laughs> you know and that's when he said, well, you know, go and let the devil be Lord of life. You know, he won't share a house with the devil. And, uh, uh you know, the devil have fooled us thinking that he does. You know, well, yeah, I know, you know, I don't give God all my time, but I do give him some of my time. You know, the devil have thought we could do that. You know, the devil have created that we can do that and still serve God. No, yeah, we can't do that. So, okay, uh, Psalm uh, 89, covenant God, covenant keeping God. Um, God uh, had the best way. You know, um, all the world, everybody who is not a committed Christian, committed to the word of God, have, 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 have bought some of the devil lies about what's good and what's not good. Everybody, you know, if you don't, you know, if you don't, um, uh, you know, go with God, then you have to buy some of the devil lies. And we all have from time to time. We don't have to stay in that condition. Um uh, verse uh, Psalm 89, verse 28. It said, My mercy I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand firm with him. Um, verse 30 said, If his sons forsake my law and do not keep my judgment, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. Now, God didn't make a covenant. He, he made a covenant with David, but he said, you're always going to have a seed here. You always. Now, that, that's, that's really, you know, that's really, you know, going out there. Uh, let David always going to have a descendant on him. Always. There's never going to be a time, you know, mankind, they, they, they don't have a descendant. 
Now, you know, sometimes, you know, in the, some of those kings in the Old Testament there, they have no descendants on earth. None. <laughs> oh, my got wiped out. Uh, but not the house of David. Uh, uh, God, God said, you know, that if it, I'm going to deal with his sons, I'm going to deal with his children that don't live right. But I'm not going to wipe them out. It's because of my covenant with David. He did that. That's covenant, you see. Um, uh, uh, a descendant of David can't live so vile that the whole seed get wiped out because of God's covenant to David. And that's, you know, God's a covenant keeper. You know, he he knows he he going to do some things uh, to cause, uh, you know, David's seed to uh, <coughs> continue on earth as long as, you know, mankind is uh, in the condition that it is, it is not, you know, he's going to call this seed to uh, endure. That that should bring great, you know, encouragement to us when God promises us something. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. That's why, you know, me personally, uh, uh, I always, in, in mind, uh, in, in, in dealing with politics, uh, on, on the national level, go with those who support Israel. <laughs> I go with those who support Israel. So Israel is not going anywhere. You know, um, they have not did some a lot of things right, but they are not going anywhere. You know, so I want to be on the side that wins. <laughs> so, um, they gonna win. Uh, yeah, they do a lot of things wrong, like you know a lot of people do, but they 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 gonna win because of what God promised. So covenant, so you, you we want to be covenant minded, covenant minded people. Uh, Jeremiah thirty three and the um, verse twenty. Verse twenty said, "Thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant with day and my covenant with night." So that there will there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant. So if you, if you can get to a point where hey, there's no more day, there's no more night, then God said, if you can do that, you can stop that, then you can stop my covenant with David. <laughs> you know, and you know, no one can stop that. Uh, you know, God gonna Fulfill his part. He, he, well, he just goes out letting us know, hey, you can depend on God. You know, Christians have, have, have been very slack. Uh, the church have, the church uh, that we know it, have been very unfaithful to the world. <laughs> Faith to the world. I thought this that song, I mentioned yesterday, I was talking to that, uh, I mentioned a song that uh, I, I think about it, so I listen to it from time to time. The song that a um, what's called the Greenfield, the uh, what's his name of Rob? Uh, anyway, uh, uh, he does that song, huh? Maybe Steve Green. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he, uh, he 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 said uh, he, in that song he said, "Will the next generation find us faithful? Will the will the generation to come find us faithful? Will we faithful? You know, you you look at uh, you know uh, look at E. W. Kenyon had to have exercise some faithfulness to his generation." Uh, we still hearing about him now, see, and that's because of faithfulness. You know, he, uh, uh, he, 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 he wanted to be a teacher. That's what God put in his heart, and he developed that. And he, he was faithful to the Word of God. You see, and now will will the next generation find us faithful? You know, if they can look back over our lives. You know, uh, could they find us faithful, or would they find us lazy? You know, uh, you know, half-hearted people. We don't want to be that. We, we want to be. We want to be faithful. We want to. We, we want to. Uh, you know, uh, Chris. Every generation supposed to get stronger and stronger. Supposed to. Supposed to. You know. You know. And it's like the the relay. We supposed to pass the baton to the next one. And uh, um, and you know, most of the time in the last generation, it really supposed to be a lot of miracles. But it will be because they, you know they, they're gonna they're gonna do exports. The last the one who get the baton, the last. You know, we but we supposed to do miracles now, whether we have the last baton or not. We're doing the miracle 
of God. Okay, now we're going to deal mostly this morning with the mouth. With the mouth. Not even putting food in it. That's how we didn't develop very well in all of us. We don't need no more development in that part. We need some development in that part. Uh, most, most people today. Um, you know, as I say, you know, um, um, I don't know if all of it be called up for um, people eating. I think eating in lack of exercise, um, you know, that are um, um, 50 years ago, uh, when I graduated from high school, there are very few fat people. The rare thing to see somebody that's really fat back then. But now, boy, the rare thing to see not somebody fat, you know, boy, they're big people today. Uh, you know, in a, you know, in a, so, you know, it's a, it's a whole new ball game now that wasn't 50 years ago. When uh, um, you know, when I graduated from high school, you know, so uh, there's some big people, not not like it, and that's a rare thing to see somebody, um, you know, like 300 pounds. <laughs> rare thing to see somebody 300 pounds back then. Rare thing, you know. I think one fellow now, I don't think he was 300 pounds. He was a big fellow, you know, more 300 pounds. I think pretty, pretty, pretty close to it. That's a rare thing, but you know, but now, <laughs> well, you know, they're on every corner almost. A rub. So, you know, but now the mouth, the, the mouth, you know, your tongue. Well, let, let's let's go first. Let's let's go to let's go to James first. Um James chapter three, one. Let's go chapter James chapter one first. James chapter one. Um things of God. Now we you know, um, we as Christian, we we have to judge ourselves in the light of the Bible, not in the light of what everybody else is doing. Because the Word of God is true. The word of God is true. Um, James chapter one. Um, verse nineteen. Let's read verse 19 together. James 1, 19. Okay, ready? Read. So then, my brother, brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now, let every man be a swift hearer. You know, don't be so quick to cut somebody off. Not to get too full. The Bible says, you know, leave. You probably didn't leave, you know, but, uh, but now... Be, 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 be more quick to listen than you are to speak. Because the Bible said the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, you know, that, that, that's just good, you know, uh, you know uh, information and good instruction. Um, uh, be more ready to listen uh, than one place said, the Bible said they give the sacrifice of food in Ecclesiastes. Says. The sacrifice of food is running in my blood. Bring your mouth a lot. That's why you got a mouth. Why well, got a mouth on the run? Uh, now let's go to the, the tongue chapter. Chapter three. The tongue chapter. You know, those chapters that deal with, those chapters that, that, that's, that spend the whole time in a certain subject, like chapter of Romans, like, like right here, uh, three, uh, in James three, like a, uh, um, uh, first Corinthians 13 with love, like Hebrews 11 with faith. And some other, no, those, those you want you want to comfort, don't be familiar with those chapters, you know. <laughs> you know, this is a chapter, you know, in a rub, you know, like we were saying yesterday, you know, like a um, uh, Hebrews 11 6 that without faith it's impossible to please him. You know, we said that I think we, I think I might, I, I thought I'd say that got to be in the top 100 verses, then it came down, we got to be in the top 10, I think, then you know, but it, it, it's, it's in the probably going around the top two. Top two verses, and I, like I made the point that it's already been judged. It's not number one. Uh, they judged that in uh, thirteen, thirteen of First Corinthians. Now by faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest 
is love. No, and, and, you, and you read the Bible, you know why love is the greatest, because love is God. God is love. They say God is faith, but he is love. He has faith, you say, but God is love. So we know love, your love life is number one. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, and it's the first commandment, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, friend, love, and love it So now you know, uh, so it probably would come in a, a two. <laughs> you know, so that's you know, some butter rough. Uh, you know, you that's why you, when you want to stay with the word, you don't want to uh, you know, you know, and, and some some say, well, it depends on sometimes, sometimes faith is more important and sometimes love is more important. No, they, that, that can't be true either. <laughs> you know, uh, um, because you see, if you don't have love, faith ain't gonna work no way. Ain't gonna work no way. You, 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 you leave faith, at, you leave love at home and try to use your faith, it's not gonna work. Not gonna work. So, you know, we stay with the Bible. The Bible said the grace of the dead is love. So, we don't get smart and say, well, it depends. Not just smart. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, now uh, uh, James 3. It says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Now, I didn't say everybody shouldn't do some teaching. You a child of God, you should be able to witness to somebody. Every child of God are supposed to reproduce themselves. Everybody, they, you know, they, you know, every, we, we all we have different talent, we have different gifts. You know, God gave the one to say five, one and two, and a one and one. The one to have one, he buried it. He didn't went did nothing. He didn't do anything. When he hit it, let somebody else do it. <laughs> you know, and you know, so uh, you know, uh, every seed. Are supposed to produce, and we are seed. You see, we are seed. And I know, you know, that's not people. You know, have not. We have not taught that like we should have. Uh, so you know, people don't live that as they should. But uh, you know, we are a seed. We are. We we are. We also are filled. We got you know. So we, uh, the seed of God's word, put in us, supposed to reproduce something. Um, the Bible said, a wise person going to win souls. And said, uh, um, "Unwise, they're complete lies. So they're not. They, they're not real. See, when you, we we got to become real, when we are not real, um, then you know your words don't have anything on them. When you're not real, you just got you just you know you you like a uh, you know you like a a, a a record player. You know, where I put this record on here and I play that and that record is not, but it's not." Uh, the record player only plays certain thing in your mouth. Does it not connect with your heart? So you say something that's really not right or real. Okay, but it said, uh, um, verse 2, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bribe the whole body. So now if you can control your mouth, the Bible says you control any part of your life. You can control your mouth. You can control what comes out of your mouth. You control anything. So there's no habit that you can't break. You know, if someone can control their mouth, you know. Um, verse 2 says, that, Indeed, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Uh, verse 4 said, Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by furious wind, they are turned by very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Now, it said the size of a situation, the force behind it, are not supposed to dictate to you what way you're going to go. But now, if your tongue is in place, if your tongue is no good, then your tongue cannot stop you from being washed down the street. So, your tongue is put, our tongue is put here. That the size of a thing, the force behind it, won't dictate where, where we're going to go at. It was put tongue pulling. So we're supposed to speak light. We can turn it around. If we, we, that rudder, if it's in place right now, if the rudder got holes in it, not, you know, all the thing, you know, if it ain't got no rudder, then the wind and the size are going to dictate what, what going, where that ship going to go. Where it's going to go. But the rudder's in place, if your tongue is in place, it 
will dictate. You can say where you're going at. See, see. But I, you know, if you just say anything, you talk a lot. You say anything come to your mind. You're not aware of speaking life to the situation. Then your tongue, you know, you don't have a rudder. <laughs> so the storms of life will then wash you away. That that way it's supposed to be. See, the storms of life is not supposed to wash Christians away like everybody else. But it does. You know, and so you so you want you want to start working on your tongue. You want to start working on it. You want to I work on it, re regroup and go back at it. You know, you know, it, it, you, you, you know, you know, you uh, know, uh, people blame certain situations. We say, but you just never know. I say, no, it ain't that ain't it at all. God put, you know, the Bible said, imitate God in uh, Ephesians five. And we look at God in creation. He said a few words, and then what? I'm not, I'm saying nothing else. Then had him. Then you don't hear him talking all day. He said a few words. And he said nothing else that day. <laughs> Well, I like to talk. I want a whole conversation. Well, go ahead on and be like the world. And they can hold conversation, but now you got a whole godly conversation. If you want the best that God had, then we got to get our tongue in order. We got to get our tongue in line. But if our tongue is in line, then we can't have what we say. We got to have what is handed out to us. <laughs> you know, so and that's not good to put your life hand in the in the life of, of man. Okay, go ahead now. now it said around uh, verse five. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a far the little far can. So the tongue is little, and you know we haven't been taught rightfully. We haven't received. We got some teaching, but we haven't received the benefit of our tongue. We have not made our tongue. Like you say, commercial valuable. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Our tongue will be commercial valuable. I'm talking about saying that we supposed to everything supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, God used his tongue to create things where there was no things. And he said, imitate me. Imitate me. Do, do like you no know, uh uh say something and don't take it back. You know, so um you know, we, we, you know, that's what we want to do. Verse uh, six, the tongue is a far. You know, you know the, the tongue, uh, the tongue burns if it's not in the right, if not headed the, the right direction. You know, um, verse seven said, for every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tame. And had been tamed by mankind. Man have tamed some wild, the, the wild beasts, <laughs> you know. But yet not he'll say anything. So in his mind, it don't matter what I say. In his mind, death and life not in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in you know other things. In his mind, verse eight. <clears throat> but no man can tame the tongue. Unruly, really evil, full of daily poison. Full of daily poison, full of blessing is whatever you put into it. If you speak hate, then it's full of poison. If you speak love, then it's full of the creation of God. Um, with it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the middle of God. So we, we, we bless God, and we curse man. And we make our tongue no use whatsoever. We bless God. We curse men. We come to church. We praise. We sing. Uh, we listen to music. We sing songs during the week. All things do all that. And then we talk about man. We make our tongue no use at all to us. See, we, we can't. We got to use our tongue just one thing. You know, we are surrounded. The devil sometimes put a, a great surrounding of, around us. Of people... Who like to talk the evil? <laughs> who like to complain? Even people, people around it that like to complain, and uh, uh, and and when you listen to complainers, it gets in you. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't listen to people complain all the time and expect the, your tongue to be valuable. <laughs> you got, you got to walk away or do something. You know, and say, "Well, no, I'm," you know. Yeah, you gotta do something. You can't sit there and listen. Well, you know, 
uh, you know, well, I'm, they hurt, and I'm going I'm, I'm to put them to pull their sorrow on me. I'm letting them pull their sorrow on me. They, they hurt. That's love. Yeah, they ain't got love. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you, you sometimes, well, you know, just get, get, get it all out. Pour it all out. You can't pour it all out. You pour it all out by getting rid of it. Not by talking your problems. <laughs> you know, that, you know, that ain't how God did it. He gets up there and said, boy, I tell you, dark again. I, I love to have light, but it's dark. I like it be light, but, it, but it's just dark, but it's dark. And I got to call it like it is. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll be talking about maybe all the darkness of it. No, that ain't the way it works. <laughs> no, that's the way psychology say it works. Maybe some they say it works. They may work. The Bible don't say it works that way. And he's the creator. <laughs> you know, so you know, don't work that way. You know, don't use your tongue for two things. It starts by not using your ear for two things. If you let your ear hear two things. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth gonna pluck it out. So it starts by you gotta stop, you gotta start listening to the word or the things of God only. Only. That takes time. This is not an overnight thing, but say but God can begin, God can do some miracles, you know. Okay, or um, um verse uh, 10 it said, Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Now you gotta sell it down. I'm I'm a, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to people curse people, talk about people, and I'm not gonna do it. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes you know, sometimes you know, just the, the people you know, and I like when I tell people I don't watch the news, right? Reason why I don't watch the news because I don't want to get upset with the news. You know, you listen sometimes they remember when I, I watched that this in uh in uh, 2019 when they have uh, some confirmation, confirmation that fellow I think was anyway. And boy, some of the stuff, some of the boys say, boy, I almost got mad at some of that stuff. Boy. You know, and, and here I'm in in Hamer, and they in Washington, D.C. What can I do about it anyway? <laughs> so why I'm letting something in Washington, D.C. upset me when I can't change? Now, I'm voting who down the vote, but they, they won't leave it voting that. You know, so so I just start so I'm watching. I'm not gonna put it before my eyes. So um say, you hear what that crazy person did? No, I didn't hear it. Sometimes you you might you know just say well you know uh, you still keep looking at it. you can't be test marked. <laughs> you know, so, anyway, well, I listen to it once in a while to find out what's going on. You know, or, uh, no, well, now it's okay you can do that uh, if you have if you know you have arrived at a certain spot. You know, but while you're growing, while you're in basic training, you can't afford to do that. We have to do some basic training stuff, but we can't do certain things. Then it says here, verse 11, does the spring send for fresh water and bitter from the same opening? The answer is what? No. No. It's it giving us some common sense things, you might say. Comparing us with our tongue, you can't speak to them. Though, though you know, you know, sometimes, you know, though the praises were very great, you might say. It didn't mean anything. So had, it, it didn't come from, and you had two speaking two things. You know, like one father, one father years ago, he, he won some awards, you know, for singer, you know, and praising. Uh, then he hit the rock bottom, you know, uh, devil. And, and he, he he said, not, he, he, he was just singing and praise for the praise, for somebody to praise him. So not that. <laughs> See, well, not that stuff, you know. And he, he reached rock bottom, then, you know, he, you got a new take of things. So, you know, you, you realize you can't, two things can't come out your mouth. You can't bless God and talk about, you can't, they say, you can't praise God in here. You can't praise God at your home. You can't praise God in certain places and then talk about your supply. Then you can, but what do I mean? Your praise was nothing. <laughs> It was nothing, you know. Going, you know, two things come out your mouth. And like you said, like you like say, uh, uh, you can't serve. But that's in Matthew. We won't turn that probably. Matthew said, "You no one can serve two masters, right?" <clears throat> uh, but now there are people 
who are living two lives. Like they're one thing around one group of people, another thing around another group of people. So ain't that serving both of them? No, all of it. See, the devil will let you work for him though you pretend to be serving God. God won't let you work for him unless he has you all. The devil will take half-hearted people, <laughs> put them on the front line, you know, let them preach, read the Bible, and do all those things, you know, that the world off, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with it. See, but but uh, uh, the God won't, see, God's not running the bargain shop. But so just God, just give God the best, the best, just give God the, all, the best you can, just give God all things, just give him God your best. No, God, you know, God, you you give God your best, then you're going to do it right. You're going to do it right. So, or in our, uh, uh, verse 12, uh, can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives like grapevine bear figs? Does no spring yield both salt, water, and fresh? So you have to, you know, your tongue, you got to start working on it. It may take some time. Uh, you know, that are, um, you, you got to watch what you say. Now you, don't, now, you don't have to. You can survive and even thrive sometimes saying anything come to your mind. Gonna be short lived. No, you know, you ain't gonna have the peace. You can't get the peace, man. You ain't got the peace. Now, you know, you, you may be a billionaire, but you ain't got the peace of God. <laughs> They'll tell you that. Now, you know, you lie to say you got peace of God and say anything you want to say. You know, that, that, don't, that don't come that way. Uh, um, you're gonna say, now, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Let him show. Show who? To God. Not to another person, to God. So this thing between you and God, <laughs> you ain't trying to impress another person. You know <laughs> that that's really way out there. So you honor another person. You know you give on to whom I to do. Uh, verse fourteen: uh, If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, I said, I said, I, they said if you got bitter envy and you got self-seeking in your heart, in other words, you got your own agenda. So you, you always have to plug up to where you are and, you know, and take on somebody's agenda until you become, you know, the head of the thing. You know, when like, you know, like you say, you know, you know that you, you go to school, you know, you're a teacher, you take on the school agenda. You, there may be some bad thing going on there. There may be a way to kind of correct those things. But you do it in a spiritual way. But if it ain't if it ain't law breaking, you take on the school agenda. You know, um, and that sometimes may give advice or something. But you take on their agenda, because uh, you are not the founder. <laughs> you know, so we got ways to change that. We like that part too. But you take on the agenda of things. You take on the agenda of things. You know. Uh, um, you know, that's the thing when uh, um, uh, that some people really got upset in Jeremiah's time because the uh, some of taken captive to Babylon, some of the still in Israel, and God told Jeremiah to write to him and told him, you know, now I'm paraphrasing this take on Babylon the gender and pray for them. pray for the leadership because as they succeed, you will succeed. They build houses. Raise families, give your children, your daughters and sons to marriage. Take on their agenda. And then you see, then you, you, you know, you read Daniel there and you, you know, you're thinking about it that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a, you know, he, he, he was a really foolish king. You know, he, was a, he was a humble man, but then prop, real, real prideful too. And uh, uh, did a lot of bad things, a lot of bad things. And then Daniel, uh, he gets this uh, vision, this dream, you nobody could interpret it. Then Daniel comes to interpret the dream. And tell them, you know, if you don't change, you know, you're going to be turned into an animal. Basically, you know, you're going to turn into an animal. And Daniel, you know, you would think that Daniel would say, oh, I, I pray to God you do turn to an animal. You're just wicked. Daniel said, no, King, please turn. Please turn, King. Don't, don't, you know, because he, he, Daniel still realized that he's still his leader and he still want him to succeed. He said, turn. Please turn, King. But the king didn't turn. You know, you know what happened to you know, you know, you 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 know, you want people over you to succeed. 
you know, you know, your our time comes, <laughs> you know, but um, you know, you and and you and a lot of times you don't see things the way you think you see things. You may think you see another a better way. You know, I'm not not a better way. Um, because you know, if you're not submitted, then you're not seeing from God's perspective. Um. You know, so you pray for, you know, I, I think about this a lot. I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this, I think about this, this a lot, you know, the way, the way things are supposed to work, <laughs> you know, like, like when I was, I told this many times uh, uh, about when we were coming from something at that time and, and I went to sleep um, <coughs> and uh, driving the car <laughs> and had the cruise on and really I didn't know, but uh, I think what woke some of them up when I ran off the road, <laughs> you know, I think that's what woke some of them up. <laughs> they wake me up. <laughs> they woke them up. I was the last to go to sleep and the last one to wake up. <laughs> and a rum, I know Mutt was sitting right side of me, you know, and he started shaking that arm. Yeah, baby, wake up. And I woke up when I came through. He was shaking that arm. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And uh, some of them, some, some of them, one or two of them, the, the, the mama and the uh, dog rolled in the back. And one of them said, hold in the room, hold in the room, hold in the room, hold in the room, you know. A <laughs> rum. Uh, you know, a uh, rum. You know, now, see, now, what if some of them would have grabbed, grabbed the string with them? Oh, what would have happened? Now, that's it. See, they did the right thing. They tried to wake the driver up. They tried to wake the driver up. So you need to wait till now you lead up. Pray for it. Don't, don't, don't try to get rid of them so quick. Pray for it. You need to wake them up sometimes. Lord, Lord, wake him up. Lord, stir him. And tell him, all right, we need to get rid of him. <laughs> you know, because if you get rid of him, you're going to get another person. And see, everybody prone to wonder. Everybody prone to be selfish. You know, sometimes you, you, you know, well, I wish we had that old one back. <laughs> you know, so so that, that's, that's as a Christian, you pray for your leaders. You pray for your leaders. As a Christian, you pray for your leaders. You know, you, you're, you're not a good Christian, you don't pray for your leaders. <laughs> but I don't like them. Ain't not do with what you like. If you love God, you don't obey God. Okay. Okay, now in a um, um 14 again says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seek in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. You know, like when I read scriptures like that, you know, or, um, I pray. You know, if I'm I'm still dealing with somebody, you know, and I'm that's old at my head. So Lord, help me, help me, you know, help, help me to see, help me to see. You know, like I told my supervisor, I uh, Clarence, uh, um, one time, you know, I told him, you know, and uh, um, I said, now, if I, he won't say, I don't know if he said, now, who he is. He said, I told him, now, if, if I won't listen to you, I can't hear God. I cut myself off from God, and I won't listen to an unsaved supervisor. I can't hear God. Now I can hear from a, I can get spiritual voices, you know, tell me something, obey me God. I disobey God, you see. And that's something we don't, people don't realize about that part, you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, verse 15 says, This wisdom does not descend from above. The Bible calls it wisdom, don't it? They are godly wisdom, they are devilish wisdom. Verse 15, this wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, demonic. It's of the devil. The devil will give you some stuff that you got to say, but it's got to be from God. All right, look, you'll do it sometimes. You take and say you submit it. The, the, the Bible, Revelation talks about the spirit of sorcery, you know, going to be more in the latter day spirit of sorcery, the sorcery spirit. People giving advice. To people who don't know God, you know they might go to church. <laughs> you know, I'm wrong. you know, like, like we hold, we hold your hand there, come right back up. No, you stay there. I'm reading. You got, you got to turn it. I'm going to read this right here. I want to turn and read it, but you just stay right there. Um, um, and I will tell you where it's at, but uh, you got to turn there. And I'm wrong. It said, um, it said, uh, and it says that, but there was a certain man called Simon who practiced, who, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria 
claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. You have it. So now some people get it back and you think they're really smart. It's sorcery. The devil, the devil doesn't know some stuff. You know. Some people say they ain't not to that stuff. Yes, they ain't something to that stuff. They are rule workers. <laughs> you know, now they can't do nothing to a committed child of God, you know, but uh, uh you know, the you you uh, you know uh, the, the like it's like right here, uh, uh um well uh but turn to num numbers. Go back to numbers. Go, we'll go to numbers. Go back to numbers. And number. Uh, um, numbers, book number four. Book number four in the Bible. Uh, Miles my, used to, uh, Miles used to call it the manual. Why he would call this a. Uh, uh, Something four, and then he named, he named the chapter something too. <laughs> he wouldn't call it the name, the number. Sometimes just you know just uh, doing some things. Or, um, uh, numbers uh, twenty-two. I think I gotta find the scripture right here. Or, um, and um, well, I may just say it too because I'm not gonna look for it long. Well, I'm, I just say this right here. Uh, it's in it's in uh, twenty two and twenty three, huh? No, not the donkey. The one that Balaam, uh, Balak said, "I have seen you know who you cursed, they cursed, and who you blessed, they blessed." Uh, it's in twenty two and twenty three. Over one of them there, but around uh, twenty two six. Twenty two six. One I don't have underlined around. Uh, Wait. Huh? Verse four. Um. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. The one that uh, he said that I've learned that you whom you blessed is blessed, and whom you cursed is cursed. Twenty-two six. Here, twenty-two six. It says, twenty six, it says uh, Therefore, please come at once and curse me and curse the people for me, for uh, for they are mighty for too, too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and whom he whom you curse is cursed. Then I come come and do something so they know I can't I can't take them on. They're too powerful for me. But now if you curse them. You know, I, I I've seen it. I've, I've seen your work. <laughs> you know, and uh, um, you know, they, you know, you hear some, you know, you know, uh, you hear people. You know, they are uh, people have been cursed. You know, but now as a child of God, that's why you don't want to be a Christian. Child of God, they can't touch you. You know, <laughs> you know, but you see, but if you ain't a child of God, if you ain't committed to God, then the devil have rights to you. You have rights to them. You know, only when I become a, a Committed child of God that he had the right to me. Okay, now go back to uh, James uh, 3. Go back to James 3. <laughs> you know, sorcery, people are starting to tell you things. Um, like I mean, one, one fellow told me one time that they told him something that he couldn't have known. I said, and did the devil know it? Yeah, devil know. You know, he, he don't tell you nothing no lie. He, he know uh, uh, like uh, uh, Kenneth Colton said, somebody somebody told a fellow, you know, he told me uh, how much money I had in my pocket. You didn't know that. <laughs> they they really did not tell you anything beneficial, really, you know. Uh, um, and uh, you know, so anyway, now James of uh, back to James three. Um, it, verse 15 said, uh, This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. But where envy and self seeking exists, envy and self seeking, 
Where, where have you got that? You got a problem. Wherever that's got your problem. Now that I know that's widespread, but now we as Christians, we, we, we got to put that stuff out. We can't allow envy and self-seeking to exist in our lives. That, that, that's trouble. You know, you, you just open the door, he may not manifest yet. <laughs> you know, but he will. He will manifest after a while. You know, there, you know, um, it said confusion and every evil thing is there. In other words, the devil haven't used everything, but he got everything there. <laughs> you got everything there, you know, you know, they, they you know. Now verse uh, 17, it said, uh, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. See, when you're willing to yield, now not to a lie, but you're willing to you're willing to yield, you don't want to yield to a lie. <clears throat> you know, you don't don't want to yield to something God told you not to yield to. See, but it goes on, and the first thing is pure. Other words, don't have a hidden agenda. See, when, you, when you have a hidden agenda, what you know, why are you doing certain things? Do you have a hidden agenda? You got a hidden agenda. So you know no hiding it. You got the devil keeping it for you. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, they ain't gonna that, that's gonna be short lived. Anything you get gonna be short lived. You know, you, you, you gotta be pure. Now, as a child of God gotta be wide open, you know. A child of God can't have another agenda. Then hey, I, I I want to serve God. I want to serve God, you know, and I'm going to learn and let God lead me and guide me, you know, into that, into that um, way we're supposed to live. Okay, now let, let's go to um uh, um uh, uh, no that that's that deep now. Uh, uh, but before you go there, now, now this verse seventeen and eighteen are the steps you want to take. You want to work on these steps and get these steps here. Uh, verse 17 said, first pure, then they're peaceable, gentle, they're willing to yield, they're full of mercy. And you know, you know, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, they're not so quick to condemn somebody, but they're full of mercy. They're full of mercy. Say good fruit without part of, without hypocrisy. It said, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. You sow peace. You sow peace. You 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 become a peacemaker. You become someone that if you got anything to say about someone, it's peace. It's peace. You know, not a uh, no, we, we don't turn it right here now, but not in Proverbs, Proverbs gives seven things that God hates. Uh Matthew gives seven things that God loves. Matthew 5. Um, the number seven, what God hates and the devil loves, is someone who sold discord. Talk to people. Someone sold discord. They talk to you know, you ever know about talk to people? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, we probably we have been in that group for a while, but you don't want to, you don't want to sow discord. You know. Number seven, what God loves is a peacemaker. So make peace. And you know, you don't, you know, sometimes you know you, you know, that's why sometimes you don't tell stuff to friends and family. Because they take sides. They take sides sometimes. You know, not they normally don't take sides, but it, it, sometimes they don't know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, and then sometimes like Proverbs, Proverbs say, you know. Uh, when you hear it start with it sound right, then you hear the other side, hey, okay, they, they, then you understand more, you know, so. But uh, you you want to be a person that, you know, you, you want to get to know the word and then, you know, put the word first place. Okay, now let's go to First Peter. First Peter. Uh, but talk about the tongue. Your mouth. That's the next book. Mm -hmm. next book. <clears throat> now, the first thing you do with your mouth as an individual that puts you on the right road is what? Confess Jesus Lord with your mouth. <laughs> That's the first thing you do. Oh, where, that you, don't, you ain't on the road yet. <laughs> you know, so the first thing you do, you confess. Jesus as Lord. Well, let's go. Let's go to Romans 10. 
We come back. Go to Romans 10. Romans 10. Romans 10. So you need to see with your eyes. Romans 10, if you got it, say I got it. Romans 10. And verse of um, 9. Romans 10, 9, okay. Uh, um, let's read that verse together. Let's read verse Romans, uh, Romans 10 and verse 9. Let's read it together. Okay, ready? Read. Yeah, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, or where you are saying what's in your heart, you're not saying what's in your head. See, you have a lot of stuff in your head. But now you, you confess, you believe God raised him from the dead, and you confess him, I, I'm making him my Lord. That's when you get saved. That's when you get saved. You know, you, you don't get saved by doing good works, but you want to do good works, but I that, don't save you. You know, uh, uh, verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. But now, if you believe, now if, if your believing is right, you're not going to be put to shame. If your believing is wrong, then what's going to happen? We'll be put to shame. See, so now, you know, a lot of times your believing is wrong. Because you didn't, you didn't know. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't know, you know, in a wrong. So you believe something that's, you know, that's that's not so. That's not so, you know. So, but you want to, you know, it's like a uh, you know, <laughs> like sometimes, you know, uh, um, some people say sometimes, well, you know, uh, um, a lot of people believe you can't die before God gets ready. And there's tons of scripture that say that ain't so, you know. But uh, let, let, let me now go to Proverbs. I, I, this is one I read this morning. So uh, I read Proverbs 9 and 10. And so, um, those are, you know, Proverbs is a lot of wisdom in it. Um, <clears throat> you know, the Bible is, you know, you know just uh, packed. Now, there are some scriptures that seem like that are, uh, that may be so, but when you rightly divide, you realize it's not so. God is no respect of person. God loves all his children. God wants all his children to live long and live strong. Now, people say because they go to church, they're serving God, but that's not the case. We all, we all know that's the case. You know, you can go to church and don't serve God. Okay, now Proverbs 10 uh, and verse 27. If you got it, say I got it. Yeah. It says, The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked will be short. I know, hey, no, hey, you know, if you fear God, you're gonna live longer. If you don't fear God, you're gonna get some days cut from you. <laughs> you know, you know, God wants you. Why God wants you? I want you to fear Him. You know, or, uh, go to chapter four here. Chapter four right here. This is another. I'll say a lot of good ones, but uh, um, chapter four and verse ten. It said, hear my son and receive my saying, and the years of your life will be many. And if you if you if you receive what I say, you know, then you're gonna live long. You're gonna live long. If you don't receive what I say, you know, then time and chance gets in there also. You know, time and chance gets in there. The Bible talks about time and chance. That are uh, you know, um, uh, you know, the Bible talks about in Ecclesiastes. That a fish get big sometimes, not because it's smart, because it had caught. Now you you can pull some big fish out of it sometimes, and then you pull some out you shouldn't pull out, throw them back in. <laughs> They're so small, you know. And what? Why? Why is it? It has some has, uh, some fish. No, it, they just you throw the net in the place where they got small fish. You got small fish from the up. Or you throw your net down there where you got big fish. You got a big, you know. Some people are fishing even right here get them big catfish. That's how they get look at it. 
But he, like that, you see, um, uh, see, now that's the way everybody is in the world that's not a child of God. The devil is out of, we, we in the devil fish, fishing hole. <laughs> Let, let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes wraps, wraps out Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. And um, what verse, what chapter I want here? Let's see. Uh, uh, huh? Five, I think. Five. I think that way. I think it's uh, nine. Nine. <laughs> Uh, and then you got to realize, you know, here here is talking about people uh, that's not committed to God, though they may partake of some things of God. Uh, um, verse uh, uh, nine eleven said, "I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor battle uh, uh, the battle is not to the strong." Nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Now, sometimes you think that's for everybody. No, that's talking about people who are not living for God. See, verse 12 For man also does not know his time, like fish taken in a cruel net. So the devil is fishing for you. You know, he's setting up traps for you. Sometimes you get away from the traps, you know. Uh, so like bird caught in a snare, so uh, the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. And that's not talking about saved people. People think it is. No matter they're not, they're not, they're not thinking. <laughs> you know, but like now, look at that again. Look at verse 11 again. Said, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, nor, but time and chance happen to them all. For man does not know his time, like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So the sons of men, it's, it's talking about men. That does not have a covenant with God. Now, you know, just to verify that, you know, go to Psalm 91 right quick. We have Psalm 91. It let you know. Another place too, but Psalm 91 especially. Um, where it puts it in, uh, you know, in a way that cannot be disputed. <laughs> Psalm 91. You got Psalm 91? Say, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Psalm 91, um, verse 2, said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. So you got to say, I trust you, God. I trust you. So when, when you got saved, you say, I trust God. I trust the word of God. See, so you got you to, if you don't know what God says, your trusting is going to be uh, not whole. You know what it says. You know, you know, somebody, somebody, somebody say, brother, uh, um, well, you know, I, I, I thought, I, I, you know, I, I expect you to be, the, I expect, I expect you to, uh, I expect this, you to be there at five o'clock. You said, did, did, did you talk to him about it? No, I didn't expect it. <laughs> see, so they, no, see, no, they, see, so you know, you got to know what God said in order to believe God. If I didn't believe God good, He is good, but the devil uh, has rights down here, <coughs> right now. Verse uh, 2 says, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. See, the, you talking about the fowler over there? The, the snare over there? He's he, he going to deliver you, a child of God, from that. You're not going to get caught by the snare. See? And from the penalty penalty. So they go, they go on and say a whole lot of stuff. They're going to deliver you. You know, they're talking about, see, that's somebody who said, God, I trust you. So I'm not in the fishing pond with other, other ones. 
<laughs> but the devil can fish, you know. Now he can't, he can't, he, he, he got he got he don't know everything, and so he set traps and everything for you. Uh, uh, but God delivered us from all the snares that the devil set for us. It goes on down there to verse 14. He said, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. See, not, see that's that's the saved people. Not only saved, but committed people. You can be saved and not committed. So you get the same reward on earth as those who are not saved. The Father can get you. That's why we want to pray, God help them. Every morning you want to pray. <laughs> you know, you know mm -hmm. every time you leave out, you don't want to leave out of home, you want to leave home about praying. And say, God help me. You, you, you know, you 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 cry out for help a lot. Uh because we need help a lot. We need help. There's some things we don't know like we should know. Okay, now while we go, let's let's go to a way over here in the old Testament anyway. Let's go to a uh, Proverbs 18. We're talking about the mouth. Proverbs 18. On the wind down, Proverbs 18. Um, in verse 21, if you got it, I got it. Okay, let's read verse 21 together. Okay, ready? Read. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, and those, those who love it will eat its fruit. But death and life is in what you say. Now, if you just use your mouth to say anything, <laughs> like that, like a kindergarten say about who kindergarten somebody talk out something tells about the boy that was in Sunday school in the room, and the teacher asked him, "What well, what is the lie?" You know, and uh, what he say? he said, uh, the, "The little boy said it's an abomination in the sight of God." In the very present, help in the time of trouble. <laughs> you know, so rough, you, know. <laughs> you know, but you can't have that way. You know, a lie is abomination. <laughs> you can't have the two of them, you know, so you, you to get, get you out of trouble, you know. So, uh, uh, so now you, 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 you got to know what the Bible is saying. You got to say the Bible said, in the presence of things that not looking right. Now, like a uh, Joel, go to Joel. That's um, go to Daniel, go to Hosel, and the next door. <laughs> Joel, one of those minor prophets back there that are uh, um, that you know, um, they mind because they don't, they don't have a lot to say, not because what they say ain't important. Small books of some of the more of the Old Testament that the prophets, you know, uh, some of them deal with history, like you know, Ruth and Esther, though they're small books too, but they're they deal with history, they're not prophesying today. Okay, uh, chapter three and verse 10. Verse 10. Um, let's read verse 10 together. Chapter three, verse 10. Okay, ready, read. These are shares into sores, and your fundamentals into severe. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now let the weak say something. If you feel weak, don't say how weak you are. If you feel tired, don't go around telling people how tired you are. If you say that I'm I'm tired. Maybe the work all day. I'm tired. Why are you telling me? <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, but see, you 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 just uh, that there's something in you. The devil wants you to put that out. You know, if you know, you know, if you if you say that long enough, even around little children, they start saying, "Don't say I'm tired." Well, if you're tired, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know. Now, see, if people say it because they don't know, you know, they don't they don't know death by the power of the tongue. You know, in the wrong. So, but the Bible said. Let the weak say, you ain't got to say what you feel. You know, somebody may feel pressure to it. You got to say it. You got to say, say, well, you know, boy, I don't feel good. I, I just feel bad. Now, nah, nah, if, you know, if you go to the doctor, 
You tell the doctor how you feel. You don't go talk to the doctor. You could stay home and talk to the don't waste, don't waste the doctor time. If you go to a doctor, you tell a doctor how you feel. If you're talking to me, I'm not going to cry thing to you. You tell me what the Bible says. <laughs> you know, you know. But so, should I go to him and tell him, you know, I'm healed with Jesus Christ? Why you say, homie, do that? Why waste your time? <laughs> okay? You know, you know. Some some of them doctors, you know, you know, not about now. Some got to be on Doctor Jenkins. <laughs> Dr. G, you know, uh, you know, he, he was, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he was the character, of uh, the one that really started Dillon Family Medicine. Uh, why the change? Now, what was it now? Something like they changed in my cloud, yeah. something, like, something like, yeah. He the one started out, and uh, you know, you know, he the one give give out physicals in football. He did, it, so he been around for a while, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, and, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I know, Mama said he she was saying some things about. Says the same time about God, and you talk to won't talk to him about God, and he said, Why are you doing me this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, so but you know, but now you you know you you talk faith, you know, but now when you go, if you if you go to the doctor, you talk, you know, now you ain't gotta you ain't gotta believe everything you say, but you know, you still you know, you wanna you wanna tell the doctor what he what you went there for. You know, you didn't go there for him to let him get him uh, saved. You know, okay. Now go, go to Matthew. Uh, no, go stop at Malachi. We're going to stop, stop at Malachi. The right for Matthew. We on the line down here, of, uh, Malachi. That right before Matthew, the last book of the Old Testament. The full uh, easiest book you might say might be to find Genesis, Malachi, Matthew, and Revelation. <laughs> okay, uh, Malachi chapter 3. If you guys say, I got it. Now we talk about your mouth. Talk about your, talk about your mouth. You know, so your, your, your mouth, you know, your mouth gets you in trouble. Um, uh, one place in Ecclesiastes says, Don't let your mouth call your flesh to sin. Ecclesiastes says that. I'm wrong. Um, uh, um, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 13 after giving some instruction about your tithe and the benefit of it they said your words have been harsh against me says the Lord so now see, they, they were tithing but then they say hey we still not getting anything we still not getting anywhere see they were saying the tithe wasn't working they say it won't work see the devil, the devil won't test you. you know, the devil, the devil's allowed to test, test us. He's allowed to try, you know. And he's the devil. He likes doing it. You know, he likes he likes throwing, you know, stuff in our way. Uh, um, uh, it, it, when verse he said, "Your words have been harsh against me," said the Lord. Uh, yet you say, "In what way have we spoken against you?" You have said, "It is useless to serve God." Okay. Yeah. But you know, if, if God going to create everybody the same, then you say that you said to serve God. If I can't die before my time, if God going to control everything, then you telling people that you said to serve God. <laughs> you know, they, why they been on it? You, they, 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 hey, you know, you're not going to get, you know, you go in there and, and you know, uh, uh, trying to live right ain't going to get you no benefits. You got to yeah, yeah, God said he some benefits. <laughs> you know, God said, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Matthew, Matthew chapter uh, 12. Matthew chapter 12, next book. Going toward the end. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. If you guys say I got it. Mm -hmm. Verse 33. Let's read verse 33 together. Okay. Ready? Read. He who make, make the tree good and then its fruit good. I also make, make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Now don't don't play games with your mouth. Don't play games with your mouth. Don't don't you know, you sometimes you you do stuff to try to you know get in with people, whatever you know. 
you know, and then you go behind him back and say, he ain't no good, you know, so don't, don't do that. You know, don't, if, don't make the tree bad, make it, make, or make it good. If the tree is good, uh, when you in Roland, it's good when you in Florence too. <laughs> you know, because a tree is a tree. So we're, don't, don't say two things about a tree. Don't say two things about a person. Verse 34 says, Brewer Vipers, how can you be in evil speak good things? For of the abundance of the heart do not speak. But I, if you want to say the right thing, you got to think about the right thing. You got to put the right things in you. Because when you get squeezed, whatever in you is going to come out. Okay. Sometimes people cuss. It's all excuse me, excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. It's in you. <laughs> See, if the cut on in you, it couldn't have came out when pressure got you, right? You cut because it's in you, you know. Like, like we said, I don't, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, bro, I don't, I don't listen to, I don't, I don't look at movies that got cuss words in. I don't want to cuss. <laughs> so, man, man, a, a lot of people got cuss words in them. I ain't thought for watching movies. I, I can do it for all of them. <laughs> I got watch none of them. You know, I remember, uh, uh, you know, I bought movies of uh, Christian movies, <laughs> you know, and got them here for the toy because I put it in trash can. <laughs> you know, I'm moving, waiting out for a long time, moving, when they, you know, I uh, uh, remember some of that song of uh, Lady Sang the Blues, you know, they, uh, what was, uh, who, uh, what Lady Sang the Blues? When it takes, who did it? What's that name movie? What's that name movie? Hmm. I remember they had a couple. I thought, oh, no, I'm going to walk over that. You know, I remember, uh, huh? Blind. Blind. Yeah, that, that other one, yeah. And I remember years ago, we went to, uh, uh, and Brother Dennis, uh, uh, because they, in the, but rather in fourth grade, I think, fourth grade, fifth, fifth grade, something there, Jordan. And they were on, he was reading a book, and the book had a couple of cuss words in it. And the teacher said, only got a couple of cuss words. <laughs> and I said, now, boy, as a teacher, you shouldn't want no cuss words. Where things on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you, you should have want in the school, you know, but not, you know, schools are, it really got bad, but the school promotes some of that stuff. You have a day when you, when you, when you wear mismatch stuff. Mm -hmm. All kinds of foolish things you promoting, you know, you should want, you know, no, we're going we gonna to be we promoting the, 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 the devil, you know, is already out there, you see, so. But okay, let's move on. Now, verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will get a count of it in the day of judgment. Now you realize if you read it rightly, the rightly divided, it would say, unless you repent of it. See, if you don't repent, and you carry a lot of idle words into the next life. You got to give account of it. You got to give account of it. See? If the people like to joke and everything, all about saying, I'm saying nothing wrong or right about that, but I'm saying you want your words, you, you want to live by your words. You want to be able to say, when a pain hits you, when Jesus strikes on the hill and mean it, <laughs> you know, call your words, you, you know, call your words, you say what you say, say what, you know, what the Bible said. 37, for well, by your words you would be justified, and by your words you'd be condemned. Ain't that good? Man, that, that's one of the great scriptures. No, it didn't say that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be judged by your wife's word, you're going to be judged by your husband's word, you're going to be judged by your parents' word, you're going to be judged by your children's word, you're going to be judged by these people. It's not your words. You would be put in control. Now, if you don't take control, then, you know, the devil take control. So you got to realize, you know, so your words. You can speak, and no one can annul what you say. When you mean to say, and if it's in the heart, they say, they say, you, you, you think, well, you know, well, you know, like people say sometimes, you know, well, you know, uh, blacks say, well, you know, we we we've been discriminated of, you know, and all that stuff, you know, and and they, we count, we we, we we oppress people, <laughs> you know, and, um, and and it's because they they don't realize what the Bible teaches. You know, the Bible teaches that God is no respecter of person. And there are people who oppress. And there are people who feel oppressed. We read that while back. No more, no more, no more, no more. If, you, if you feel oppressed, you feel somebody's oppressing you, 
neither one of you got God. That's in Ecclesiastes, what, two, I think, or two or three, but everything else. You know. Neither you want to got God. You got God. See, when you realize I'm a child of God, if God be for me, who can be against me? You know, but you got to develop, you got to grow that, you know, grow that to where, you know, where we, it's, it's mature, you know, in the, uh, but we, we can develop it to where we get where we want to be at. Okay, now I go to a, 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 a Acts, no, Ephesians, Ephesians. We're going to up. At Ephesians, Ephesians chapter uh, 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We never did get the first Peter, did we? Huh? What, the what now? The movie you're talking about. The one that was it? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One that I lose. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Ephesians chapter 4. How about your tongue? That are uh, you know God put us in control, but people tell us that people are people control. Um, Ephesians chapter four. Be, In chapter four and uh, mm-hmm. got it? Mm-hmm. chapter four. I want to read this verse together? Twenty nine, verse four twenty nine. Okay, okay. four twenty nine, four twenty nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. ready? Read. Let no, no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the heroes. You're talking about your mouth. Now, you, you have to work to get there. It, it, that, that, that ain't going to be accomplished if someone starts today. That ain't going to be accomplished fully in a year. <laughs> but it, you, you'll be falling down the road in y'all right now. You know, it takes a while to get that. Not, not, but uh, you, you, you say things. You know, it just bypass your brain sometimes. You just you, out of bunk heart, don't say things. You only hear what you say sometimes. <laughs> you know, but that's what God wants us to be. You see, that we God, God, God don't want us to talk corrupt things. You know, He want to talk corrupt things because see, it's uh, uh, corrupt things. Is you coming? You, you hearing it first? <laughs> you know, um, verse thirty one says, "Let all bitterness." Wrath, anger, clamoring, evil speaking. How much all the evil speaking be put away from you with all matters? So you want to put all the evil speaking away. You know, somebody said, "Well, you boy, you don't talk to people no more." Uh, you, I, I like your old self when you when we should sat down for hours and talk about somebody. <laughs> and then, well, you got it's easy. You going after life? Going after life? You say you realize death and life is the power of your tongue. You blaming somebody else, and you know you you can control your destiny with your tongue. And you say it won't happen overnight, but it begins. You begin the journey, you know. And God gives us great help, you know, to you know to go that way, you know. So, um, verse thirty two says, uh, "And be kind to one another, tender hearted." You want to be you want to be kind to people. Don't be harsh. You know, anybody can be harsh. The devil can be harsh. He is. He's harsh. You know, he smiles too, but the devil's harsh. You know, the devil, you know, the devil is a, 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 a he manipulates people. Um, you know, and God wants us not to, God wants us to be real. See, he, he, you know, he don't, you know, uh, now, you know, you, you're going to, you know, you, 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 you start down that road, the devil sends all kind of things out to you. <laughs> you know, he don't want to go down that road. So, you know, down that road is freedom. Not really freedom, you know. So, in number of but not death and life is in the power of the tongue. It's not in somebody else's hands. See, it's in your destiny. God didn't leave your destiny in another man's hand, another person's hand. Now, you can put it in another person's hands if you want to, 
You know, the devil, devil let you do it. You know, the devil wants you to do it. But if God hadn't put your destiny in somebody's hand, you know, of, uh, you know, and that's what you know, the, the the church, you know, sometimes has have have, have uh, not been faithful to their calling. Because people like entertainment from the church. They say, they say well, we've come to have a good time. So I told you that. Where that written at? You're going to learn something so you can live something. So you can be victorious in life instead of, you know, getting your behind kicked all the time. You know, so, uh, uh, well, we'll stop that, uh, uh, um, and the time and all that, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, death and life, you can, you can, you can plant, you begin to plant life in you, you know, you can pull the weeds up, pull the roots up, you know, after a while, then, you know, and I, uh, when you deal with our lives, we are trees, a tree don't produce you in one, one season. You got to think of the tree for a couple of seasons. <laughs> you know, do that thing. You know, that's where it is with uh, you know, the Christian, the child of God. You got to stay. We got to stay with it, the things of God and continue to do what God wants to do. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading us in all the truth. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Okay. Then this time. The offering. Father, we thank you as we come to bring the time to offer to you. We thank you, open the wings of heaven, and we pour us out a blessing. Jesus, you're the high priest of our confession. We ask you to take the time offer to the Father. Worship the Father on our behalf, and we claim to come into the promised land. For we are the healed, not the sick, the rich, not the poor, but the free, not the bound, but above on and not beneath. And everything we put in our hands to is prospering. And we thank you, Father, for all your abundant provisions to us as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord.